60 days ago, nobody said that we could change the withdrawal agreement in the EU treaty, the, the, the current well, withdrawal agreement. Well, you haven't changed it. Nobody said, everybody now, on the contrary, everybody around the EU now accepts that it must be changed. Well, it may be changed. It hasn't happened. Nobody said that we could change the, uh, the backstop. But again, that it is hasn't now, been done. That is now under serious it's under discussion. But when I talk to people in European and capitals, they are very sceptical you'll get anything like what you want. Well, it is certainly true, Robert, that uh, the British negotiating position has been undermined by the so-called surrender bill. Not so-called, it is a surrender bill. Uh, the, the, the bill that uh, says that we'd have to rule out no deal. They've tried to wreck our negotiating position, but we're not going to let them do it. But in we're going to get on. We're going to get sure. on and negotiate a deal if we but possibly can. can. But, 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 and if we can't get yeah. a deal, then we're going to come out of the EU on October the 31st, come what may. No, That's what I we're going to do. But, but you, you did say something I thought was very interesting to MPs, which is that you believe now that the EU are agreeing to some mechanism, you've got it, the principle of consent, right. whereby whatever arrangements, if any arrangements, to replace the backstop are agreed, there will be a way for Northern Ireland to get out of those arrangements. How would that work? Well, I mean, this is, this is, the, this is kind of where the rubber is hitting the road, OK? The, 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 the problem with the backstop is, is it, it's, it's, the arrangement, it's the arrangement, right, Potentially. exactly. It's the arrangement that keeps the UK locked in the uh, EU's legal order, the customs union uh, and the single market, with the EU having the say about our ability to mm -hmm. exit. That's the problem with it. And it's just never going to go through the House of Commons. So we need to get rid of that, But you get as any I said. sense, and so that, you, but you, you said it, you, you, you know, yes. you're saying to MPs that you think the EU will move on that, well, genuinely? Yes, I do. And, and they already genuinely have moved in the sense that the, what they're willing to consider are other ways that allow us to work with our Irish friends to accomplish several things. Number one, we need to avoid a, a, any kind of border checks mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland. Number two, we need to respect the, the peace process in Northern Ireland, which is incredibly important. Number three, we need to respect the unity of the EU single market, and we think we can also do that. But we also have to ensure that the whole of the UK withdraws from the EU. And we can do that too. And the, the, the way to do it is to make sure that you do much more on the, what you know about the maximum facilitations, all the checks away from the border that you can do. Uh, look at the proposal the UK has made about the sanitary and phyto sanitary unity of the island of Ireland, the, the famous quote mm. attributed to Ian Paisley the Elder, and perhaps wrongly that you know, the, uh, the, the, the people of Northern Ireland may be British, but the cattle are Irish, right? Uh, within that idea, there is the kernel of a, of a solution. And then you have the but third... But it is the, only the kernel of the, a solution, isn't it? And as I say, when I well, talk to people in Brussels, in Dublin, in Paris and Berlin, they say they're nowhere near seeing anything from you they can agree to. Well, uh, let's... Let's see how, how we get on. Actually, the, a great deal of uh, progress has been made, and a, a huge amount of people keep saying, well, you've got, there's no paper that's been turned, sure. there's, there's no documents. Actually, a huge amount of work is being done. I won't hide it from you, Robert. The timetable is very tight. It certainly is. And it is days. not. 36 days. It is not, I'm going to be absolutely clear with you, it is not made easier for the UK negotiating side to have, um, you know, Parliament passing stuff that uh, tries to take no deal off the table and uh, the but court saying, we saying this, time, so saying I've this to, or that. But I've got to ask you about that. I mean, the Attorney General said today that you would abide by the so-called Ben Act, which says if you can't get a deal, you've got to write to the EU requesting an extension. So you're going to write this letter, are you? Well, we're going to go for a deal and we're going to get no, a deal. No, no, if we no, no. He said can. you would abide by this law. Well, that's, oh, so what, that means that, we that, have to write the letter that, if there's no deal. Of course, only kicks in if we fail to get a deal. But you're conceding a there's a reasonable prospect you're not going to get a deal. And under those circumstances, what I can say to you is that we will respect the law yep. and we will come out on October the 31st. Those two, so, but those two statements, many would say, are completely well, I, incompatible. I, well, we will respect the law and we will come out on October the How? 31st. Well, it, obviously, 
uh, we've got some, some tough negotiations ahead. And if you'll forgive me, I don't want to tip the hand of the UK government more than Parliament has already <laughs> required us to do now, so. Now, the only reason I have the pleasure of seeing you here today is because you had to come back No, I was, coming back, I was coming back anyway. I was coming back anyway. You're, 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 you're many hours earlier than you would have expected I, because I of yesterday's... Because I, fulf of I fulfilled all my commitments in New York, I would including never, a I would speech, never have expected including a speech at four right, in the morning, done. including but a speech at four in the morning. The point is we had this dramatic ruling yesterday yes. from the Supreme Court, which you have described as a court interfering in political questions. Now, yes. some of your colleagues say that if this is the politicisation of the Supreme Court, we've got to think as a nation about how that court operates. Yeah. Now, they think that there should be, for example, as happens in America, political yeah, confirmation no. hearings for members of the Supreme Court. Is that something you want to think no, about? I, I think that's kind of jumping a, a long way down the, the, the track. But you're and, not ruling it out. No, though, well, well, look, let's, let's be clear about what has happened. This is a, a, yes, the Supreme Court is quite a novel institution. It's also a, uh, let's be clear, a novel and groundbreaking judgment that they have, uh, they have come to. Um, it clearly, I respect it. I think it's. I think it's wrong for the reasons that I've given. I think that uh, the court has uh, erred in the sense that it has pronounced on the political question of what Parliament should be uh, debating at a certain uh, time in a very, a very difficult time. No, it hasn't. In our it simply said that it simply said that no, sovereignty actually, lies with MPs. Well, which surely you would agree with that. Actually, if you look at what uh, the president of the court said she was very clear that uh, the issue that she thought parliament should be debating was was Brexit. No, she so, explicitly she, said uh, that's she, not what was on her mind. She said her decision had nothing to do with Brexit. Well, she was if, explicit about that, Prime well, Minister. I, I, I don't wish to impugn her motives at all, but that what she said in her findings was that uh, it was appropriate for parliament at this stage to be, debate, to be debating Brexit. Well, actually, that was what, what she said. said no, no, what she findings. explicitly said, and I'm going to have to disagree with you, because what she absolutely said was this was not about Brexit, it was about the appropriate length of time. Yeah, well, for I'm, Parliament I'm, I'm going to respectfully have to, I'm respectfully have to contradict you, because uh, that was what she said. So, um, what, if for my, and for, for my money, that is a very interesting development. Right. And, and what flows uh, from that and, in your well, mind? Well, I think that people will want to consider. Um, the political implications and the constitutional implications, because I think what most lawyers would would agree is that actually, um, you know, this wasn't an outcome they expected, and certainly it wasn't uh, an outcome that anybody that advised us expected. And it's new; it's a new thing. It seems to be uh, having a bearing on a very sensitive political question. And so, yeah, people will ask all sorts of questions. But for the moment, what we need to do is take account of the, of the ruling, uh, put it into practice. Here we are. Parliament is back. Um, that's and fine. And, 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 and that's fine. Will you prorogue and, it before the well, Queen's speech? I, um, I, I would like to have a Queen's speech. We will have to absorb the full implications of the ruling. But a I think what the, country, what the country wants, I think, is for us to get on with a strong domestic okay. agenda. The Supreme and, Court, and that does require a Queen's speech. We, we haven't got an enormous amount of time. The Supreme Court said that you gave unlawful advice to the Queen. Some of your colleagues have said that should be a resigning issue for you. What would you're not going to resign. No. What, what, because, what, what would it take to get you to resign? What well, would you have to do wrong? Well, we, we've got to get on and deliver Brexit on October the 31st. That's the most, uh, that's the biggest uh, function of this government. But we also have a dynamic uh, conservative, a one nation conservative agenda to take the country forward. That's what I want to do. And clearly it's, it's frustrating that in the course of trying to get a deal on Brexit, we're being undermined, I'm afraid, by people in Parliament who, let's be blunt, don't want Brexit you, look, to said happen that, you, you've, at said all. That, you've said that multiple times, but you have, I don't think I said it at all on this in, in this interview. It's worth repeating. It's worth repeating. No, they it. they, they don't want and Brexit. Did I say it? But, but, believe it or not, you have. Now, you say you also want a general election. You plainly can't govern 
without a majority. Nicola Sturgeon and Jeremy Corbyn have said you can have your general election. Come on, if you'll if you'll Bring just if you'll just delay Brexit beyond the thirty first well, of yeah, October. So why just, not give them what they what, want and have your yeah, general election, what, look, and then yeah. fight your general election on the basis of the kind of Brexit or no Brexit that is plainly the contentious no, issue? It, look, they, they, uh, they can have a general election any time they like. They turned it down but twice. Why not? Why and, not delay uh, Brexit a few days and have your general election? Well, because we are coming out of the EU on October the 31st. What, what, and what the they want to do... Or the 5th of November what they want the, to do... Why does it matter? What they, want to do, what they want to do is to frustrate Brexit. And they are, I'm afraid, running away from a general election. Jeremy Corbyn, do you know, Jeremy Corbyn wanted to have a general... He, there was a passage in his conference speech, I'm told, in which he agreed that it would be a good idea to have a general election. It was cut out by uh, the Stasi in the form of John McDonnell. Uh, who said that, uh, you know, because I think they're worried about two possibilities. The first is, uh, of course, the, the likelihood that he would lose. And then there's the terrifying but remote possibility that he might win. And uh, they don't want to go into an election, uh, as far as I can see, with Jeremy Corbyn. That's why they're running away from it. Now, a couple of very quick questions. Um, lots of your colleagues aren't exactly admirers of your senior advisor. Dominic Cummings. Does Dominic Cummings still have your no, full we, confidence? I take the decisions and I've got a lot Does of Does he still have very your full good, confidence? Of course. And I've got a lot of very good uh, advisors, but advisors obviously give advice and, and I take the decisions. So and I take I take responsibility. You take responsibility. But what advice has he ever given to you? And I certainly you wouldn't dream down. of discussing the advice that he gives me because that would be totally wrong. And then finally, it is literally the final question. Um, the London Assembly has asked for details on, you know, whether or not you helped that particular entrepreneur, Jennifer Acuri, in an unfair yeah. way. Are you going to give them the information? I, they I'm want? very happy to help my old friends in the London Assembly, but all I can say is they'd be better off uh, spending more uh, money on police officers, uh, which we give them, uh, and less on press officers, in my view. That'd be my strong advice to the current Mayor of London. Prime Minister, very good to see you. Thank you.